Hey guys, welcome back to 247 DIY. Uh, today I've got the Forester back here in the shop again. Um, I've been driving lately and I've been noticing uh, a bit of grinding from the rear end here. Um, I had it in the garage the other day just to check everything out. Turns out I've got a couple of the pads uh, are metal on metal right now. Uh, so we're going to go ahead, we're going to get this up in the air and we're going to do new rotors and new pads on the back. So stick around and I'll show you how to do it. Okay, so we've got the car off the ground onto jack stands and we've removed the tires from both sides. The first thing we need to do is we need to go ahead and get this caliper removed. Uh, chances are yours is going to look quite a bit rustier than this. These are only a couple years old which is why I'm a little frustrated that uh, only after two years I got to go ahead and replace these pads again. Uh, but I'm going to get into that in just a minute. But there's four 14 millimeter bolts on the back side and I'll get you a better angle in a second. Uh, two that hold the actual caliper with the piston on and two that hold the caliper bracket on. So let's go ahead and get that off. Okay, so first we're going to take these 14 millimeter bolts off that hold the actual hydraulic caliper part on. Like I said, these were just replaced not that long ago. Uh, you may have more a little bit of a struggle getting these bolts loosened up than I'm going to have here because these really haven't had time to rust at all. But pretty straightforward. Once you've got those bolts out, you're probably going to need a pry bar to work this free. And once you go ahead and get that freed up, you're going to want to go ahead and tuck that up out of the way. In the back here, I usually just take and set them right on the upper control arm. Just make sure they're not going to fall. Um, you don't want to cause any undue stress on the uh, brake hose. Uh, you can actually crush the inner portion of that hose. Um, and it won't allow the brake fluid to release from the caliper itself. So you want to protect that hose. Just tuck the caliper up here out of the way where it can't fall uh, and it'll be just fine there. So now we need to go ahead and remove the two 14 millimeter bolts that hold this bracket on. And once again, these are the same size as the other ones, 14 millimeter. Chances are these ones are going to be much more rusted than the other ones. Again, these are breaking free pretty easy for me because they were just off a couple years ago. And the same thing here. Just get in, pry them right off. We'll go ahead and we'll bring this bracket uh, over to the bench and I'll show you some more once we get over there. Okay guys, so here we are over uh, on the bench. And when you take a look at this, uh, you can see that the inside pad is all the way down to the metal. Uh, the outside pad has significant wear, but there's a decent amount of life left on there. And there's a couple reasons for this, uh, what could be going on. Um, two of which um, are not the issue here, uh, but if this is what's happened to you, uh, you want to go ahead and first look at your slider pins on the caliper. Uh, both these slider pins are moving freely, no issues there. Like I said, these calipers are only about two years old. And you also want to check the piston over on, uh, it's still over on the car that's connected to your brake hose. Um, I already checked that, the piston's moving just fine. So what I have a feeling happened is these pads got stuck in these sliders. And one thing I've noticed over the years, um, when you get replacement pads, and you go ahead and put them in these brackets, is they're extremely tight. And I think that that's for two reasons. One, these pads are often uh, covered in a coating, and I believe it makes these ears here um, a little bit too wide, as well as when you get these calipers, the grooves that these uh, shims sit down in also now have a coating on them, which makes them narrower than normal which means that these shims are now squeezed tighter, which then squeeze tighter on these ears. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you how I've been cleaning these up now for the past couple years, and I really haven't had much issues uh, now that I've been doing it this way. So the first thing you wanna do is disassemble your caliper all the way. Get both pads out. Get both shims out. 
Uh, a good brake pad kit will come with new shims. Uh, worst case scenario, you could clean these up and try to reuse them, but go ahead and get yourself a brake pad kit that's going to come with new shims. Okay, so I set the bracket up here in the vise, and I'm just going to take my drill with a wire wheel on it, and we're just going to clean these grooves out uh, that those sliders sit in. And then I just like to take a metal file and I bring it along the top and the bottom faces here uh, where those sliders are going to sit. And we just smooth those surfaces out a bit, remove any scale, anything that may have caused these openings to have become narrower over time. We're just going to smooth this out, that way it doesn't squeeze those shims too tight. And once we're done with that, we'll repeat it up here on the other side and we'll move on to getting the new shims and the pads reinstalled in this bracket. Okay, so now that we have the bracket cleaned back up, we can take our new shims and we can push them into the opening. And if they go in with relative to no issue, it's a good sign. They're just going to kind of sit there, one on either side. And then we have our new pads. Now, you can go ahead and install the bracket back on the vehicle after we replace the rotor, and it does make life a little easier installing the pads this way. But I like to pre-install them um, so that you can try to get an idea if these ears um, are going to be too tight in the bracket or not. So you can go ahead and use the lubricant that will come in the kit usually with your brake pads, or if you have some on hand, you can use your preferred, preferred brake lubricant. But I like to get a good amount right up inside here where the pads are going to sit. Now you're going to want one pad that has the squeal tab here on it. And I usually put that so that it faces the inside towards like your wheel hub toward the, the inside of the wheel well area. Go ahead and coat these ears with lubricant. And it can be a little fiddly, but go ahead and slot them right into the bracket. And just as I thought, now that I have these in here, um, they are tighter than can be. They don't want to move at all. So we're going to take these out. I'm going to wipe the lubricant off the ears. Uh, we're going to throw this in the vise and we're going to remove just a little bit of material from this and I'll show you how to do that. Okay guys, so I've got the pad here in the bracket and the part that comes into issue is actually this part here. Um, and then also it's going to be the same on the other side, but these two faces that face the, the outside of the bracket when it slots in, those are going to press here. Um, and the brake pad is essentially just too wide. It's the same thing we did before. We're just going to take our hand file. You could use an angle grinder, uh, but I feel that that uh, leaves you with a chance of removing too much material. Just a few swipes down this side, a few swipes down this side to clearance a little bit of material so that we have more movement and a, lot, a bit more free slide in that pad so that it won't get stuck in the future uh, like we already had on the set of pads we just pulled off. And there's both pads clearanced and sitting in the bracket. We will go ahead and install that as soon as we go ahead and replace the rotor that's still over on the car. Okay, so now you need to come over here and you want to remove this little rubber grommet that sits in the rotor. And go ahead and save that because usually the rotors don't come with new ones. And then you want to go ahead and rotate until you get close to the bottom. Inside of here is going to be a little gear, um, and I'll try to get you in there, uh, get a light in there and get you up close to see if you can see it. Um, but in case I can't, what you're going to want to do is stick a medium-sized flathead screwdriver in there, and you're going to want to rotate that gear. Um, now me personally, I always forget um, whether it needs to be moved up or down. 
um, to loosen and or tighten the shoes for your e-brake but we need to loosen them so that we have enough room for this cap to come off because they usually wear a groove into the inside uh, drum barrel um, inside this rotor and you just need to make a little bit of room so you're gonna go in there and you're gonna turn that gear if it gets tight and you can't move this anymore you know they went the wrong way so then start moving the gear in the other direction uh, that should loosen it up so that we can work on getting this rotor off uh, this is that gear I was talking about under here and when you reach through that hole this is what you're gonna go ahead and spin You know, it's actually making them wider. Uh, I already forgot which direction to go. So in this particular one, uh, it's up. I can't get, confirm if that's going to be the same on every Subaru, or if they even install them exactly the same when they're when they come from the factory. But really, the way I do with it do it is I just play around with them. All right, now I'm going to show you a little secret. I guess it's not really a, a secret, but it's my preferred method for getting these rotors off. Um, most of these rotors are going to come with two threaded holes here on the face and I just have these two uh, M8 by 1.25 thread pitch bolts um, laying around. I keep them because this is what I use for all the time. Um, you can thread them into those holes, take your impact gun, And you can use those to pop your rotor off the hub. Now if it doesn't have those holes, which I can't verify this, but I'm assuming probably some cheaper manufacturers may not include those, you're just gonna have to hammer away um, on the rotor here uh, to get it to break free from the hub. We can go ahead and remove that. The next thing you wanna do that um, is honestly absolutely crucial is you need to clean this hub face up especially if you live in a rusty area. Uh, sometimes some water can get behind that rotor if there's a high or a low spot and it can cause some scaling, um, which means when you put your new rotor on, it's not gonna have a level surface. And that rotor can actually uh, cause a wobble. You'll feel it uh, when you brake because that rotor is not sitting flat and so it'll wobble. So just take your wire wheel on your drill and go around and get that cleaned up. Spend a good amount of time making sure that this is good and cleaned up and that the hub face here is absolutely flat. So before we go ahead and put the rotor on, you need to go ahead and clean it up with some brake clean. And one little extra thing I like to do, it's not necessary, but I do like to take a little anti-seize and just put it around right here on the ring where this rotor is going to meet and made up with the hub. And that should make taking it off next time a bit easier. And you want to avoid handling the rotor from the braking surface. We're going to bring it all the way over and install it on the vehicle. Now we can go ahead and install our bracket, which already has the pads in it. Now I did get a little bit ahead of myself there. Um, before you go ahead and put that bracket on, you can still do with that bracket on there. Um, but generally speaking, you want to do it before that you start getting everything installed. Is you need to go ahead and readjust your parking brake. Now you're going to go back through here just like before, and you're going to spin that gear in the opposite way 
to start moving those shoes out. And what you wanna do is you wanna move them all the way out till those shoes are, shoes are touching and you can't move this uh, rotor by hand anymore. Like right now, I can move it. You want to adjust it to the point where it won't move anymore, then back it off uh, about two turns. Um, and that should be adjusted uh, just fine. Just go ahead and spin it before you uh, finish everything up. Just make sure it's not, you can't hear it rubbing on those shoes. If you still hear it rubbing, turn it maybe, you know, one more uh, turn on the gear um, just so everything's adjusted nicely and those shoes are close to the edge but not touching. And don't forget to reinstall that rubber plug. And one last thing before we go ahead and install the hydraulic portion of the caliper back on. This is when I go ahead and use the lubricant that comes with your pads. You're gonna wanna put some on the front and more importantly on the back where that hydraulic piston is gonna sit. But you just get on there and just smear it around and just give it a little bit of a lubricated coating there on the surface. And before we move on, you want to come up here in the engine bay, just pull the cap off your brake reservoir and just leave it sitting there. Um, but we just need to take that cap off to free up some space in the reservoir. Now for this next step, they do make um, special brake servicing kits uh, with special tools. But really all you need, if you don't feel like buying a full kit, is just a C-clamp like this. And you can see I position it on the back of the housing and on the piston. And you're just going to squeeze that piston back into the caliper housing. Just like that. And we just go ahead and reinstall that back where it was. And if when you're going to tighten these bolts down, if this inner portion here starts to spin, it's just a 17 millimeter hex. Put a 17 millimeter wrench on there and you can go ahead and tighten your bolt down. All right guys, so that's that. I'm gonna go ahead and move on over, get the other side done. It's exactly the same as this side. Uh, don't forget to throw your brake cap back on underneath the hood. And I'm going to go ahead and take this for a drive. Now me personally, um, I like to go out and I follow a brake bed-in procedure. Um, it's just a series of speed ups to a certain miles per hour, slow down to a certain miles per hour. You do that three to six times. Now there is some debate on whether it's even necessary on modern brake pads or not. So I'm not going to film any of that, but I will leave a link uh, below explaining the process of a bed-in uh, procedure after you change your pads. Um, you can go ahead and check that out if you want to. So hopefully you guys found that useful. Um, if you did, go ahead and leave a comment below. Let me know what you think. Let me know if it helped you out. As always guys, give the video a like. Feel free to leave a comment. And if you're not subscribed already, please go ahead and subscribe. Thanks.